there, I'm Len Wolston, sci-fi fantasy writer, blogger, and nerd. As you may or may not be aware, I actually live in a very forested area in California, and so I actually wanted to take the time to help you and give my best advice for writing those four scenes and four settings so that you can write a very convincing story. So I have 10 different things that I wanted to point out and some are kind of clearing up misconceptions that people have about forest writing and some of it is just additional information that will help you to describe the setting in a more believable manner. So without further ado, here we go. Number one, the forest is loud. I cannot stress this enough, but the force is actually really loud, whether you are walking or running or trying to be in stealth mode and move through the force, the force floor actually makes it super hard to remain quiet. There are leaves crunching, there are twigs that are snapping, and I think a lot of people think that because there's not a lot of people in the forest that it's really quiet, when actually it's really loud. Also at night where most of the animals are active, you will constantly be hearing them going through the leaves and the wind rushing and the trees and all this. And so it's actually quite loud and it's not as quiet as maybe portrayed in some books. As you can hear and see, it is quite loud when you are just walking around. So definitely keep that in mind if you have your characters walking through the forest. Number two, creating a fire is actually harder than it seems. So my husband and I have this kind of, I don't know, ongoing remark that we have because we live in California and as you are probably aware, there's like wildfires happening all the freaking time. And we have this remark how it seems that with fire, if it is unintentional, it's super easy, but if you are actually trying to make a fire, it can be rather challenging. It's not just putting logs together and then doing two rocks and making a spark and then all of a sudden you have a campfire. There's actually a lot of work that goes into it. And I think what a lot of writers often forget is that not only is it hard to start a fire, but finding firewood in the forest is actually kind of tricky in of itself. It requires actually a lot of there being the right kind of wood that's available that's already dried, but then you have to find a means to split said wood, and then you have to stack it properly. And then there's the whole ignition thing, which I was talking about with the two stones that I see it is very common. Um, so definitely kind of keep that in mind and see what works for your story. But I can tell you firsthand that creating that campfire is not as easy as it seems. Number three. Hunting is actually also hard. Now you may have read and probably seen in movies how it seems that people are out in the forest and they come across a deer or they come across a jackrabbit or some other animal and that's boom, that's their automatic meal. These wildlife creatures are actually really good at hiding and they aren't as readily available in most scenarios where you think that they are. If that plays into your story and you do have an overabundance of wildlife, then that's going to work to their advantage. But to make it more believable, something that you want to integrate, especially if you're doing something where it's like a magic realism, is to show how your characters actually have to make a very concerted effort to find for any kind of meal and that hunting said meal is rather tricky and the wildlife is actually pretty in tune with the whole hunting process. Now let's keep talking about food. Number four, cooking over a fire is not necessarily appetizing. So maybe your characters were able to find some kind of animal and they have already hunted it. Now it's time to the actual cooking process. You have that fire all figured out, great. 
but roasting meat on an open flame is going to produce a very different taste than what you may experience in your own kitchen. For example, most of the time that you're going to find that in real life, if you were cooking over an open flame, for one, it takes a lot longer, and two, it produces very tough meat. And the type of wood that you're using for your fire can make a huge difference. For example, if you're using pine wood and you have this meat that's roasting over pine wood, chances are that pine that is in that wood is going to permeate into that meat and it can result in something that tastes like meat that's been dipped in pine salt. Yuck. Number five is also food related, which is berries and mushrooms, beware. In wildlife, you will find that there will be an abundance of some kind of berry and there will also be some kind of mushroom that you're seeing growing in the trees or on other forest land. And you have to be very careful on what it is. Now you can play with that. You can have a character who is able to recognize what is edible and non-toxic or you can have a character eat something that they think is okay when actually it's not and now they have to find a cure for that. That is definitely something you can use to your advantage when writing your fantasy story. Number six, describe the plant or life to set your scene. What I mean by this is that use your descriptions really well in describing what kind of forest that your characters are in. This will allow the reader to get in that forest scene, but you need to be careful about what kind of trees that you're describing and what kind of brush you're describing because as you can imagine, describing what a rainforest looks like is very different from what a mountainous forest looks like. So definitely make sure that you're able to pick those word choices to describe the plant life that would be consistent with the type of forest that they're in. Number seven, it is dark at night, even with a full moon. Now I know that you're trying to say that, oh, well there's a full moon out, so it's basically this bright white light. But I can tell you in my experience, just in me going down to feed my goats at night, it can be super dark, even with a full moon, especially if you have other huge trees that are in the way blocking some of that light. It is super dark and your eyes can adjust some, but even then, like I always make sure that I have a flashlight with me because it just is so dark and it kind of will boggle your mind if you actually go out into the forest at night and have no lights. It is amazing how dark it can get and how our human eyes cannot adapt as well as animals. And so definitely keep that in mind that it is darker than you probably are imagining and to use some other kind of light source or maybe it's a magic spell or something to illuminate and let your character see at night. Number eight, the stars are not that visible. I know it seems kind of counterintuitive to think, well, if you're going out in nature that you'll readily see nature. But I can tell you that in the forest, especially with so many treetops and especially if it's a very dense forest, your vision of the sky is not going to be as open as you may think and you can't really see stars. Even if you're in some kind of clearing, it has to be at a certain elevation for you to be able to see the whole sky. And it all depends on what kind of horizon you're on because I can tell you that I personally had that misconception. When I was living in the city, I had a college professor who lived out in the woods and he was an astronomy professor. And I was remarking to him like, oh, that's so cool, you must see so many stars. And he's like, well, no, when I look up, I see trees. So definitely keep that in mind because I have seen that a lot of people like to think that their characters are just able to look up at the sky and see stars, but not realizing that you would be seeing a lot of trees if you're in the forest. Number nine, sleeping is a challenge, especially if you're sleeping on ground because it is cold at night. Like I was talking about how you don't have a bunch of this moonlight that especially is not gonna keep you warm. Even having that nice fire next to you and having a character sleep next to the fire, a lot of the heat that you think your body would be able to kind of maintain because of that, especially when you're sleeping on the ground, 
it actually is going away from you. And so this is actually a great way for you to use kind of the description of how your character is. Let's say that you have a tough warrior and he's going through his quest and he is stopping for the night. He more than likely is going to be used to sleeping on the ground, used to being in the cold, and he is just gonna be able to just kind of willpower his way through the night. However, you may have a character that they're not used to traveling at all. Maybe they live in a palace somewhere or even they live in a cabin, but they're not used to traveling. So having those first few nights where they're having to sleep on the ground, where it's super cold, and they're just not able to really relax, that can definitely build to the internalization that your character may be experiencing as they're having to adjust being on the road versus being at home. And lastly, and my least favorite, is number 10, bugs. Oh my goodness, the bugs. You may think that, oh, it's just flies every now and then, or when it's summertime, it's mosquitoes. No, there are always bugs, guys. There are spiders always crawling around. Like, I don't even want to show you the pictures that I have had of the spiders that have gotten into my house, not even what live outside. But there are bugs everywhere in the forest. And that is something you can use when you are writing. So instead of having, you know, these dialogue ta tags where your character is talking and maybe they sigh or something like that, if they're in the forest, they could be smacking a mosquito off them. They could be trying to shoo a fly. There's something that is always trying to get you. Those creepy crawlies are always there. And like we were talking about with having your character sleep on the ground, yeah, guess what's going after them? Bugs. So don't underestimate the power of using those pesky critters in your writing if your characters are in the forest. Now I say all this to say in conclusion that I actually really love living in the forest that I do. It is beautiful, it is peaceful, and I can say that it has improved my writing, especially my fantasy stories, because I'm able to relate to living in a forest and having my characters in a forest, and it becomes something that is a little piece of me that goes into my stories. I hope that this has helped you to get a better understanding of how to write the forest scenes and the forest setting for your fantasy stories, whatever your stories are, and that you're able to kind of see that it may not be exactly what you think it is or how you imagine it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out so you don't miss any of my videos. And until next video, guys, bye!